my dear students once again i am back with another part of events twice and whole level so today i am going to start the fourth part the governor heard the exchanges in the cell heard the door clanged once more and heard macleary announced that the examination had begun at last it was 9:25 am and there was a great calm at 9:40 am the examination board rang through and the assistant secretary with special responsibility for modern languages asked to speak to the governor the examination had already started no doubt ah a quarter of an hour ago yes well there was a correction slip which some fool had forgotten to place in the examination package very brief could the governor please yes of course I will put you straight through to Mr. Jackson in Deving. Hold the line a minute. Explanation. The governor heard what was talked on the phone between Stephens and Jackson. He heard the door being shut and also heard McLeary announcing the beginning of the exam. It was 9:25 a.m. and there was great peace. At 9:40 a.m., the assistant secretary or modern languages called up the examination board to speak to the governor the examination had already started about a quarter of an hour ago he told him that some fool had not placed the correction slip in the examination package he then tried to seek help from the governor the receiver assures him of help by directly connecting the call to mr jackson in d wing was this the sort of thing the governor had feared was the phone call a fake some signal some secret message but he could check on that immediately he dialed the number of the examination board but heard only the staccato bleep of a line engaged but then the line was engaged wasn't it yes not very intelligent that uh, two minutes later he heard some whispered communications in the cell and then macleary's broad scores voice will you please stop writing a uh, we while mr evans and listen carefully candidates offering german 0211 should note the following correction on page 3 line 15 the fourth word should read golden in not golden and the whole phrase will therefore read zum golden in loven not zum golden loen i will repeat that staccato means a short musical note a kind of beeping sound scots another term for scottish an explanation is could this be a reason behind his fear the governor thought a line of thoughts came to his mind about the call being a fake call used to share some signal or a secret message he then cross checked it by dialing the number of examination board and he heard the sound of continuous beep which was which one hears if the phone is engaged after a gap of 2 minutes he heard some whisper after a while he heard macleary giving instruction to the evans in his heavy scottish voice he asked him to stop writing for a while and also instructed him to open page 3 here he gave him some instructions as to make correction of fourth word in 15th line the governor listened and smiled 
he had taken german in the sixth form her himself and he remembered all about the agreements of adjectives and so did mcclury by the sound of things for the minister's pronunciation was most impressive to what about events he probably did not know what an adjective was the phone rang again the magistrates court they needed a prison van and a couple of prison officers remand case and within two minutes the governor was wondering whether that could be a hoax he told himself not to be so silly his imagination was beginning to run right magistrate civil officer who administers law hoax means prank explanation the governor listened and smiled because he had taken german as a language when he was in sixth class he remembered about the adjectives and so did mcclary the minister's pronunciation of the words sounded very impressive to the governor but he thought there was less chances of events being aware of the adjectives meanwhile he received a call from the magistrates civil officer who administers law court there was a need of a prison van and some officers as there was a remand case within the next two minutes the governor thought it to be a fake call but then he thought that he was thinking too much his imagination was getting out of control events for the first quarter of an hour stephens had dutifully peered through the peep hole at the intervals of one minute or so and after that every two minutes at 10:45 a.m everything was still all right as he looked through the peep peep hole once more it took four or five seconds no more what was the point it was always more or less the same even his pen between his lips sat staring straight in front of him towards the door seeking it seemed some sorely needed inspiration from somewhere and opposite him mcclary seated slightly ask you from the table now his face in semi profile his hair as stephens had noticed earlier amateurishly clipped pretty closely to the skull his eyes behind the pebble lenses peering short sightedly at the church times his right index finger hooked beneath the narrow clerical collar and the fingers of the left hand the ma- nails meticulously manicured slowly stroking in the short black beard stare means gaze askew means angled semi profile partly turned amateurish beginner meticulously carefully manicured means well cared tidy explanation for the first 15 minutes stephens had looked into the cell through the peep hole after a gap of every 1 minute and then after a gap of 2 minutes at 10:45 am everything seemed normal when he looked through the hole there was no difference and it remained the same as always even was always chewing his pen and looking at the front mcclary always seated on his chair a bit tilted on one side with his face partly turned stephens had noticed him earlier that his hair was cut very short near the scalp he was reading the church times through his spectacles and his first finger was under his collar the fingers of the left hand were nicely manicured he was softly touching his black beard at 10:50 am the receiver crackled to life and the governor realized he had almost forgotten evans for a few minutes evans please sir a whisper please sir louder would you mind if i put a blanket round me shoulders sir it's a bit parky in here isn't it silence there is one 
on me bung here sir mcleary be quick about it silence crackle means sizzle crack parky means cold at 10:50 a.m. the phone rang and after a while the governor found that he had almost forgotten about evans he then heard evans seeking permission from the supervisor to wrap a blanket around his shoulder as he was feeling cold there mcleary allowed him at 10:51 a.m. Stephens was more than a little surprised to see a grey regulation blanket draped around Evans' shoulders, and he frowned slightly and looked at the examinee more closely. But Evans, the pen is still between his teeth, was staring just as vacantly as before, blankly beneath a blanket. Should Stephens report the slight irregularity? anything at all fishy had not jackson said he looked through the peep hole once again and even as he did so evans pulled the dirty blanket more closely to himself was he planning a sudden batman leap to suffocate mcleary in the blanket don't be daft there was never any sun on the side of the prison no heating either during the summer months and it could get quite chilly in some of the cells stephen decided to revert to his earlier every minute observation at 11:20 a.m. the receiver once more crackled across the silence of the governor's office and mcleary informed evans that only 5 minutes remained The examination was almost over now but something is still gnawed away quietly in the governor's mind he reached for the phone once more word meaning frown means to make face fishy doubtful thing suffocate breathless revert return to and nod means to chew explanation at 10:51 a.m. stephens opened the peep hole and was surprised to see evans sitting with a blanket on his shoulders it seemed strange to him and he even thought of reporting jackson for the new change he had noticed he again looked at him and noticed that evans pulled the dirty blanket close to himself now stephens was getting doubtful about evans He even thought that he could harm McLeary by suffocating him with the blanket. But then he told himself that she should not, uh, sorry, he should not behave so foolish as there is no sun on the side of prison, not even in summers. So it is normal that the cell gets chilly. So he decided to return back to his every minute check through the peep hole. At 11:20 a.m., once again the governor's phone rang. Meanwhile, McLeary told Evans that only five minutes were left for the exam to be completed. Governor was still doubtful about something, but he went to receive the call. At 11:22 a.m., Jackson shouted along the corridor to Stephens. The governor wanted to speak with him. "Hurry, man!" Stephens picked up the phone. apprehensively and listened to the rapidly spoken orders stephens himself was to accompany mcleary to the main prison gate understood stephens personally was to make absolutely sure that the door was locked on even after mcleary had left the cell understood understood at 11:25 am the governor heard the final exchanges apprehensive means worried anxious absolutely means completely explanation at 11:22 jackson shouted to stephens as the governor wanted to talk to him he ran up and listened carefully to each and everything ordered to him it was his duty to accompany mcleary to the main gate of the prison stephens had to be fully assured about evans call evans cell being properly locked 
when McLeary leaves it. At 11.25 a.m., the governor heard the final talks between Evans and McLeary. Now the text part. McLeary, stop writing please. Silence. McLeary, put your she sheets in order. Put your sheets in order and see they are correctly numbered. Silence. Scraping of chairs and tables. Thank you very much, sir. All right, was it? Uh, not too bad. Good. Mr. Stevens? The governor heard the door clang for the last time. The examination was over. How did he get on, do you think? asked Stephens as he walked beside McCleary to the main gates. Ouch, I can't think he has distinguished himself. I'm afraid. His Scots accent seemed broader than ever and his long black overcoat reaching almost to his knees fostered the illusion that he had suddenly grown slimmer. Scrapping means the sound of an action of rubbing something. Distinguish means differentiate. Foster means to support. Illusion means mirage, imagination. Now explanation. McLeary asked Evans to stop writing. He also told him to arrange his sheets in order. Then, he, then the sound of the movement of chairs was heard. Evans said thank you to McLeary. He queried as to how his exam was. Evans replied that it was not too bad. He then called Mr. Stevens. The governor heard the final shutting down of the door. The exam was over. Stephen asked McLeary, did Evans' exam go well? McLeary said he did not think so. His Scottish accent seemed a bit different from the other, from the earlier one. Moreover, his overcoat was now reaching close to his knees, leading to the imagination that he had suddenly turned slim. Stephens felt pleased that the governor had asked him, and not Jackson, to see McLeary off the premises and all in all the morning had gone pretty well. But something stopped him from making his way directly to the canteen for a belated cup of coffee. He wanted to take just one last look at events. It was like a program he had seen on TV about a woman who could really, never really convince herself that she had locked the front door when she had gone to bed. Often she would she had got up 12, 15, sometimes 20 times to check the bolts. Belated means late, overdue, and convinced means to assure. Explanation Stephens was happy if the governor chose him over Jackson to accompany. Mac Leary of the premises. Everything was done fine this day, he thought. He stopped him from going to the canteen for an overdue cup of coffee. He wanted to see events for one last time. It seemed to him like a TV program in which the lady is never sure of locking the door before going to bed and she would get up 12, 15 or even 20 times to check the bolts. So students, let us carry on. He re-entered D-Wing, made his way along to Evans' cell and opened the peep hole once more. Oh no, Christ, no! There sprawled back in Evans' chair was a man. For a semi-second, Stephens thought it must be Evans. A grey regulation blanket slipping from his shoulders, the front of his Closely cropped, irregularly tufted hair awash with fierce red blood which had dripped already through the small black beard 
and was even now spreading horribly over the white clerical collar and down into the black clerical front. Stephen shouted wildly for Jackson, and the words appeared to penetrate the curtain of blood that veiled MacLary's ears. For the minister's hand felt feebly for a handkerchief from his pocket and held it to his bleeding head, the blood seeping slowly through the white linen. He gave a long, low moan and tried to speak, but his voice trailed away, and by the time Jackson had arrived and dispatched Stephens to ring the police and the ambulance, the handkerchief was sticky, squelchy wood of cloth. Sprawl means lie back. Tufted means bunch, awash means covered, drip means drop, veil means face covering, feeble, weak, seeping, flowing, moan, cry, trailed, stream, squelchy, a soft sucking sound made when pressure is applied to liquid or mud. And now explanation. Stephens again entered into the into the D wing and he once again opened the peep hole of Evans cell. When he looked inside through it, he cried, Oh Christ, as he was shocked to see the situation inside. For a few seconds he thought it was Stephens on his chair, but it was not. The churchman was lying back. His hair was soaked in blood. The blood was flowing down horribly from his beard to his collar and then on his black overcoat. Stephen shouted for Jackson so loudly that even MacLeary, whose ear was filled with blood, was able to hear it. The churchman was weakly searching for the hanky to stop Stop the blood flowing from his head. The hanky got soaked in the blood. He cried out of pain. He tried to speak but could not do so. By the time Jackson came and ordered Stephens to call the police and ambulance, the hanky got fully soaked in blood and now it was making a soft sucking sound when pressure was applied to it.